Now, if you want to see how to do this in a GeoLayers project specifically, I'll be producing a tutorial about that over on my Patreon page. It's going to be an exclusive tutorial for my Tier 2 patrons. So if you're interested in that, follow the link in the video description. So if we're going to work with 3D in Adobe After Effects, we need to have a 3D model. Now an easy way to get a free model is to head over here to cgtrader.com, set up an account. I'm going to go and filter by aircraft. And at the left here, we have this file formats drop down menu. Now at the time of this recording, After Effects works very well with the GLTF or GLB file format. You can also work with OBJs, but just from my very limited playing around with the program as of right now, I've had a lot of problems like with textures being imported in properly or staying linked up. This could be due to my limited knowledge of working in a 3D workflows. But if you wanna have a smooth process, uh, I urge you to filter by this file format. Here, I can also filter by free, and I'm gonna scroll around and find something cool, and I'm gonna go with this super sweet MIG-35. So you can click on free download right here. All right, I'm inside of Adobe After Effects now, and for my background, I have a map that I went and got from naturalearthdata.com. I'll make this available in the project file on Patreon as well. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can head over to the Patreon page and download all of these project files. So I'm going to create a new composition here. We'll call it 3D object on a map. And I'll drag in the natural earth map. Now this is actually pretty huge. It's 12,000 pixels by 6,000 and I actually lowered the resolution from the original TIFF that you get from the natural earth data starter kit. So this is pretty ginormous, but you know, I wanted something that I can fly my airplane over. So now I'm going to come grab the GLB 3D file and I'm going to simply drag this and drop this in right here. Now I can drag this and drop it directly in my composition here and we get this little dialog box. So first I am going to rename the file at the top here. Let's just shorten it quite a bit, call it MIG-35 fighter jet. Now if you look in the actual comp panel, it looks like it's way zoomed in or this just the size of this 3D model is ginormous. So I wanna change the size of it. So right here in the basic tab, we have object scale. I can manually adjust the scale of this object if I want, or I can click make comp size. And there we go, now I have this you know, fit very nicely. It looks like the anchor point's in a good position too. There's an advanced tab where you can make some additional changes if you want, but as of right, like, you know, you can change the axis um, if you want those to be flipped or whatever, but I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and I'll be fine with this. Okay, now how do we start to actually play around with our 3D camera? Well, there's a default camera in After Effects that you can start to adjust with these camera control tools up here. So you have three main sets of tools. You have orbit controls, pan, and dolly controls. So if you click and hold orbit, I will select orbit around scene, which will orbit around kind of the center here. And now if I click directly in the comp and start to drag around, you can see, yay, I'm flying the default camera around the uh, 3D object here. What about the map? Well, the map isn't set to 3D and you can see down here in the timeline, our MIG fighter jet is indeed set to 3D, but our natural earth PNG is not. So if I just click that on, now you can see we have two 3D objects. So now we can start to adjust the airplane to pull it off of the map. So if I click here, um, we can adjust the rotation. If I just hit shortcut key R, you'll notice that by default, the orientation is set to 270. So if we zero that out, that's gonna like make it flat with the map here. Insert your flat earth jokes, please. I would appreciate it down in the comment section. I know it's coming. Um, great shortcut to know is C. So if you just hit C, it's going to bring up your orbit tools. If you hit C again, it will give you your pan tools. If you hit C again, it will give you your dolly tools. And you can quickly toggle between those. It's a great and fun and easy way to work with 3D. So now if I orbit around here, you can see that I can grab the plane. And with the selection tool, hit V for selection tool, I can start to pull this off of the map. There you go. So now we got this plane on our map here. It is the size of like Canada, but we can take care of that just by scaling it down. Let's scale it down to like 22. There you go. Now we got this cool little plane with some reflection. Woohoo! Now it's still looking pretty flat and that's because we don't have any shadows. So how do we add shadows? Well, we got to add a light to have shadows. 
So to do that, you can simply right click in the timeline or you can go to layer, new light, and under light type, choose environment. And the default settings should be good. You can you know, customize the intensity or the color if you want. Can you adjust the color? I don't know. Just make sure that cast shadows is selected. And as always, even after you create this light, you can go back and change these parameters. So don't worry too much about that. So as soon as we add the environment light, our shadow should pop up. There we go. Okay, so we have our shadow, we have our 3D object, our 3D map. Now we wanna add some movement here. So we can add movement in two ways. We can have the plane flying and we can animate a camera. But we don't have a camera right now. We've just been messing with this default camera. In fact, if you click on the drop down menu for cameras, it says active camera default. So that is just once again the After Effects default camera. You can actually create a camera layer based on your default camera's current view. To do that, you go to layer and select camera. And then right here, it says create camera from 3D view. It's really cool. And now we have this new camera. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it uh, camera one. I don't know if we're gonna do multiple cameras. So now if I hit the C shortcut key and grab my camera control tools, it's going to adjust whatever camera I have active, which now is camera one instead of default. And in fact, if we switch back to default and we start to like navigate around in default view and zoom out, you can actually see the camera here, which is actually a pretty cool view. And now you can do, um, there's a ton, you know, 3D goes deep inside of After Effects, you can set up um, two view, four view, and have, um, you know, go pretty crazy here. So I'll switch this back to active camera. Now let's add some movement. Well, we can um, animate our plane. So this would be helpful, switch to front view so you can see just more of this. And I think we should be able to zoom out of our front view. There we go. Now we'll grab our little MiG fighter jet and we'll hit position and I can just add a keyframe for position, maybe drag it over here like this, and then come over to the five or six second mark, drag it over here, and drag it up here, and now you'll see a little, like, we have a little line, whoop, don't grab your map. You'll see we have this little line here, and now if I wanna curve this, I can hit the G tool to grab the pen, and move my playhead here. And now if I grab this, it's gonna add a little bezier. And it's very important that I'm doing this from the top because if I didn't do this, or I'm sorry, from the front camera, because if I do this uh, from any other view, it's gonna adjust my Z. Because you can see here as I move these bezier handles, it, it messes with the X and Y position, but it's not messing with the Z, which is essentially my plane's altitude. So now we've got this little movement here. Our plane is flying, but if I want it to like move, like follow the path, you simply right click it, go to transform and say auto orient, and we want it to orient along the path. Do that, and that's gonna send our plane probably into a tailspin. Yeah, it's like pointing directly up. So to fix this, hit R for rotation, and then um, I think we're gonna need to adjust probably the uh, let's see, right oh, we need to bring our Y rotation to negative 90. There we go. And now we have a should, we should have a plane that's flying right now. Okay, now we got a little plane that's cruising here. You can go crazy with this. I'm not going to go too crazy, but we can add like, we can also add a keyframe for, um, you know, if we want it to like pivot, uh, let's say uh, Z rotation. No, it's just orientation, I guess. Let's see, there we go. That's kind of like back and forth there. So add a keyframe for this, and let's say we want this to like slowly be like pitching. I don't, I don't know what the pilot term is. This is not gonna look realistic at all, so please spare me. Now we can do a quick down and dirty camera move. So if you open up transformation options, I will do point of interest and position keyframes. And now I will hit C, for the orbit and maybe like have this go down like this, hit C again and maybe change the position and maybe even zoom in a little bit. So we have like some dynamic camera movement here. I've never had the inspiration to learn Blender, but this is definitely 
extremely motivating to make me want to learn, like expand my 3D knowledge and vocabulary because it will definitely be applicable in After Effects now. So to open up the renderer, you select this little drop down menu here. This shows you the different types of renderers that you have. You have the classic 3D, advanced 3D, and cinema 4D. So we're set to advanced 3D. And to change the parameters, you just click on renderer options. Now here you'll see a handful of different parameters that you can use to basically adjust the render quality as well as the shadow quality. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope it was helpful. Let me know if you've used this feature inside of Adobe After Effects and how you find working with it. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Once again, if you wanna see the GeoLayers 3 workflow for working with 3D objects, I'm gonna create an exclusive tutorial for my tier two patrons. So you can follow the link in the video description to view that. And I will see you next time.